All right, we're going to continue our lecture on radiographic evaluation and classification of acetabular fractures in the OTA core curriculum resident lecture series version 5 by Drs. Laura Blum and Jeffrey Trad Martin. I'm Saka Roman narrating, and we are on to the second section of this lecture. I'm going to talk about acetabulum fractures, plain radiographs, classification. So one of your objectives is to understand the classification of elementary and associated patterns to recognize fracture patterns, and we're going to talk about an algorithm for you to be familiar with. So fracture classification. It's uh, fairly um, universal uh, to uh, utilize the Letournel classification. Uh, this has uh, somewhat um, stood the test of time and um, is based on Emile Letournel's extensive uh, experience managing uh, acetabulum fractures and developing surgical approaches and thinking about it uh, in the context of this classification. And uh, his book is essentially set up uh, very much like um, this lecture to some extent, starting talking about the radiographic lines. We talked about that in the first video and then understanding how those lines are disrupted to interpret what kind of fracture is happening. Uh, and then we'll also talk about CT scans in, the, in, the, in one of the later videos of this uh, lecture uh, slide deck. So Letournel's classification is based on five elementary patterns and five associated patterns. Uh, it's based on anatomic pattern, uh, which is determined by analyzing the six radiographic landmarks, de uh, determining which are disrupted, uh, and uh, there are variations from these pattern uh, patterns. That they're they're common. They're well recognized, but um, there really has been no other good classification so far that's come to replace this. So I'm not going to read through all those uh, on the right. Uh, you can take a look at that, and we're going to go through them one one by one anyway. One thing worth mentioning is the um, elementary patterns typically involve one column, except for the transverse fracture, which was put in there. Uh, because of what Letournel said was the purity of the fracture line, uh, and it also makes it a nice classification with five and five. So the elementary patterns um, essentially separate part or the entire uh, single column from the acetabulum. And as I said, the transverse fractures are an exception because both columns are involved by definition. Um, and... Um, we will go through these one by one. They're shown here with some of the more common uh, fracture lines for those uh, respective patterns that you might see. The associated patterns are essentially combinations of elementary patterns. So for instance, instead of just a posterior wall, posterior column, you have a posterior column with associated posterior wall or transverse with associated posterior wall. So these are typically an elementary pattern with additional fracture components or a combination of elementary patterns. So what are those elementary patterns? Well, we'll start with the anterior wall fracture. It's somewhat uncommon as an isolated fracture. Um, and what we're showing you here are uh, views of the um, sort of outer table and uh, views on the inner table side. And we'll go through these with uh, each of the fracture patterns just so you're oriented. Um, so the anterior column, uh, I'm sorry, anterior wall fracture will often look something like this. Um, the um, even less common fracture pattern would be sort of the anterior wall fracture that involves just like the rim of the anterior wall, kind of like the homologue of the posterior wall fracture. Um, anterior anterior um, hip dislocations are fairly uncommon also, so you, those are even less frequent. Uh, where you will see these patterns are um, are in uh, geriatric patterns, uh, geriatric fracture patterns. And you'll see anterior walls or a variation of that. So on the AP, the AIIS and the pubis are generally not involved. Um, the fracture typically uh, occurs um, along the upper one third of the anterior column. You will often see on an obturator oblique view this trapezoidal shaped fragment, which is a, the middle portion of that anterior column and it's usually going medially along with the femoral head. So a lot of times you'll get this, um, you know, as opposed to like a posterior wall fracture, oftentimes the posterior 
or the head goes out the hip posteriorly. And in, in, in interwall cases, it actually is driven medially. Um, and a lot of times you'll have this quadrilateral plate blowout, um, and you'll have this fragment looking like this, and the head is going medially, or um, kind of like a protrusio pattern. On the iliac oblique, remember, we're looking at the posterior column and the anterior wall. Uh, here you may be able to establish the point of rupture of the anterior wall, but um, it's not as diagnostic for essentially, you know, easily recognizing anterior wall fracture patterns, as you see, even though we told you that, you know, you'll see that anterior wall line here. Um, you can see the head makes it difficult to really recognize. And what you're really confirming here also is that that posterior column is intact. Now, posterior column, uh, I'm sorry, posterior wall fractures are very common. You're going to see these. Um, they are commonly associated with a posterior dislocation of the femoral head. Uh, sometimes you can have a phenomenon called marginal impaction, uh, which will, I might have to uh, kind of illustrate that for you a little bit. Um, so on the AP x-ray, what do you see? Uh, well, sometimes there's posterior dislocation of the femoral head. Uh, the posterior wall may appear as this sort of second sort of line, or, you know, you'll have your source seal, but then you'll have this other line floating like a cap on the dislocated head. Um, and then if the hip is dislocated and then reduced, the fracture may be a little bit hard to see. Uh, so here you can see hip doesn't look dislocated, but you can see there's some, um, a, there's some abnormality, certainly when you compare the contralateral side and fragmentation of that um, posterior wall. On your obturator oblique view, um, you will really see a lot because now you get the head out of the way. The posterior wall is very nicely seen it's typically displaced um, posteriorly and a little bit superiorly, and you can really get a good sense of what's going on here. If the femoral head subluxed, you're gonna see that too. Now, what you're not gonna see on plane radiographs is marginal impaction. Um, so marginal, in, and we'll talk about maybe when we get to the CT scan section, but it's important with posterior walls that you look for this. It will not be seen on X-ray. And with marginal impaction, you are essentially getting almost like a joint depression um, of the articular surface. Uh, and uh, it is something that um, is not, again, not well seen on plane radiographs. Maybe we'll talk about this when we get to CT scans. Um, on the iliac oblique, uh, not, so, not super helpful. Uh, what you will see is that the posterior column is intact, typically. So you can see here. Um, that line is not disrupted, um, so you may not see the fracture very well. Um, well, we are going to review a CT scan image, um, and I'll try to talk to you about marginal impaction. So, fracture line often looks something like this. Um, when you see marginal impaction, I'll show you on the other side here. So, um, what you will see is, as opposed to the joint surface being like this, Okay, with marginal impaction, the joint surface the joint surface will be something like this. So you will actually have sort of this impaction, maybe that the joint articular surface went in that way. Okay, so the head drives its way into the joint surface. The joint surface gets pushed back, maybe out down to here. Kind of like if you think about a depression in a tibial plateau fracture with the femoral condyle pushing the articular surface down. So you may have you may have a situation like that, which you're not going to see on x-ray. And that will need to be, you know, restored back in this direction to get back here. And then sometimes you have to put like bone graft or a rafting screw or something like that. But you got to recognize it. Um, and you will rule out other associated fracture lines that are maybe not well seen on x-ray on your CT scan. So let's get back to the radiograph. So anterior column fractures are your next elementary type. Now, these are subclassified a little bit because there's a lot of real estate here uh, with the anterior column fractures because they kind of include that whole um, uh, anterior part of the iliac wing and, and fractures will commonly exit up there. So you sort of have these kind of like low uh, anterior column fractures and then uh, fractures that sort of you know, work their way higher and higher up the iliac wing, as you can see in these examples. Um, so there's, there's sort of very low ones, uh, low ones, intermediate, and then way up the iliac crest, and sort of shown very nicely here in these images. 
On the AP, you're going to see a disrupted iliopectineal line in orange, right? So, you know, you're in you can see a nice intact iliopectineal line here for comparison, and you can see there's a disruption at that arrow. Uh, the iliac wing fracture, if you have that high, high uh, type of uh, anterior column variant, you're going to see a iliac wing fracture uh, on the AP view. On the obturator oblique, you should very clearly see disruption of that iliopectineal line and anterior column disruption. Um, if there's any medial femoral head displacement, you'll see it here. And on the iliac oblique view, you should be able to confirm that the posterior column's intact. And that iliac wing fracture, you'll probably see it a little bit better. Posterior column fractures. So these are somewhat uncommon. Um, the fracture extends from the posterior column, usually near the apex of the greater sciatic notch. So you'll see, as opposed to like the anterior column fractures where we had all these you know, fracture lines coming up the wing, uh, the posterior column fracture really doesn't, you know, they don't really come up in this direction. So they generally are down here uh, near the greater sciatic notch. Um, and as with any column fracture, as, you, as you've noticed so far, as opposed to the fracture being like just involving here, anterior column po fractures, posterior column fractures, they all fracture through the obturator ring, right? So you see this fracture line come down through the ring, okay? And um, this separates the entire ischioacetabular segment from the innominate bone. So that is this segment here is separated from this segment. On the AP x-ray, you're going to see a loss of relationship of that teardrop with the iliopectineal line. Okay, so the ischial line is displaced medially, in this case by the femoral head. So you can see perhaps there's some subtle, you know, um, lack of congruency there. The femoral head may be a little bit medial. And um, the iliopectineal line is intact. This is important. So, um, you know, when you see a posterior column fracture, they're not that common. If that iliopectineal line is intact on this x-ray, then... It's a posterior column fracture. It's not, you know, a transverse or something else. The obturator oblique view is going to confirm that, right? Intact iliopectineal line um, and uh, potentially, you know, you, what you should see is on that obturator oblique disruption of the obturator foramen uh, inferiorly. On the iliac oblique, um, it's a posterior column fracture, so that ilioischial line is going to be completely disrupted. In this particular case, you see quite a bit of medial displacement of the femoral head, um, and it's traveling with that um, sort of ischiopubic segment, right? So, um, and the fracture line typically goes towards the angle of the greater sciatic notch. So in CT scans, you may see this sort of orientation on your axial images. So transverse fractures, we've talked a lot about this already. Let's uh, go through that. So there are three sub-variants of the transverse fracture, but all of them, if you, or, you know, it's important also, we didn't really talk about this, but when you're looking at the pelvis and thinking about your columns, um, you have the, you, you should really orient the, the acetate, you know, the, the pelvis in this sort of inverted Y, right, where you sort of have this, okay? So this is your orientation to understand everything here is anterior. I'm sorry, everything here, in this case, it's anterior and posterior, right? So this is all anterior and this is posterior, right? So here you have a fracture going straight across. It's a transverse fracture, right? It's running from anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior, but it's transverse. Sorry. So that inverted um why is a very uh, important way to uh, think about what's anterior, what's posterior. Another way to think about it is, you know, you should have this, you know, you should have this uh, horseshoe kind of pointing upside down, more or less. So you take your pelvic model. This is a great way to learn this. It's really look at a 3D model. Look at it from the outer table. Turn it so that horseshoe is pointing down. Now you have your inverted Y, and now you can reference everything anterior and posterior off of that. All right. Getting back to transverse fractures. So um, the subvariants are infratectal on the left, tectal meaning the 
uh, the wheat bearing um, articular surface. Juxtatectal is passing through just the highest point of that cotyloid fossa. The cotyloid fossa is, is this area here, right? To some extent represented by that lateral limb of the teardrop. And transtectal actually goes through the wheat bearing surface of the dome of the acetabulum. Okay, so um, from a prognostic standpoint, um, this is the one that you have to worry about the most and you have to be even more careful about getting as close to anatomic as possible. So on the AP x-ray, both ilioischial and iliopectineal lines are disrupted. The obturator ring is intact uh, and you may get some uh, uh, associated SI joint injury sometimes. A lot of times the femoral head will sort of uh, migrate medially along with that inferior segment. Obturator oblique x-ray is going to show integrity of the obturator ring again down here and it aids in evaluation of relative displacement of the fragments. So uh, that is you may say okay the anterior column looks really displaced uh, and then when you get your other view you're like oh, the posterior column doesn't look that displaced. Maybe we should go anteriorly to fix this fracture. Uh, because it's transverse. So when we talk about surgical approaches, you're going to see you the option to go anterior or posterior with these. Iliac oblique depicts rupture, uh, I'm sorry, the point of rupture at the greater sciatic notch uh, or shows you where the fracture is relative to that. CT scans, you're going to see uh, oftentimes a vertical orientation. Here you want to assess there's no concomitant SI joint widening. And on the coronal view, I would certainly say 3D views um, are really helpful for these. It helps to identify where that fracture line is relative to the uh, articular surface. Another way people have looked at this are things called roof arc angles, which I don't think we're going to review in this um, slide deck. Okay, I think we're going to pause here and we'll pick up with the associated fracture types in the next video.